Hello, Trombone Internet. This is Chris Van Hoff, assistant to the regional manager of the International Trombone Festival. We at the festival, of course, are huge fans of the pod, and we are really excited to invite you to attend this year's 2024 International Trombone Festival at TCU in Fort Worth, Texas. Dave Begnosh is our host. We have the world premiere of a brand new double concerto for trombone and piano with the Fort Worth Symphony. We have the American Brass Quintet. We have late night jazz featuring a Latin jam session. Like everything is happening, all the cats will be there. It's the best hang in the world, and we hope to see you there. You can register for the festival still online at www.internationaltrombonefestival.com, and it's happening the last week of May. So go register. We'll see you in Texas. Hi, hello. This hello. is. <laughs> This is our second episode of Now Hearing Candidate One, where we break down the process from audition announcement through audition day. And I'm delighted to be here with Doug Rosenthal, who is the assistant principal trombonist of the Kennedy Center Opera House Orchestra. Nailed it. Um, <laughs> Dougie Fresh, as I like to call him. Um, and first of all, hi. Hi, Doug. How's it hi. going? Hi. Good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I'm so happy to talk to you. Likewise. I I've known you for a while and and I think I first came across who you were when I when I read this article. It's called A Tale of Two Auditions and and your story is is so unique and crazy to anyone you you say. You won two auditions in the span of like what 3 days? So the 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 most accurate way of putting it is I was the last person standing. At two auditions. <laughs> okay. I, I was offered a trial with the Utah Symphony, and I did win the audition here at the Kennedy Center. So, you know, just for the cleanest record, you know. But uh, the Utah audition was February 5th through 6th, and the Kennedy Center audition, for me, was February 8th and 9th. Yeah, so you had a whole day off in between. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there, 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 there are direct flights, or at least one direct flight, from Salt Lake City to D.C. That, that was very... <laughs> I was very grateful for that. I mean... First of all, it's one thing taking two auditions, and these are these are big auditions, and it's one thing taking two auditions that are orchestral, and you're like, oh, well, a lot of the lists will be the same. But one was a, an opera orchestra with opera excerpts, so the amount of, of what you were learning over this time was it was crazy, I imagine. Was there any overlap? Yeah, so they, they were both for positions that were titled assistant principal trombone, but the duty of both positions is playing second and then jumping up to principal when the principal isn't there. So to that end, there was a lot of overlap. I'm sure people have said this on your show before. There's a lot of opera in the mainstream audition rep, right? The Valkyries, Hungarian March, William Tell Overture, Gatsaladra Overture. So that, that kind of stuff, there was overlap. I was in the New World Symphony at the time, and the season was in full swing. So I had to be kind of judicious about the preparation just to kind of not, not overdo the, uh, the old choppers. I won't say which, but I did find myself having days where I was going to have to give one list more attention than the other. Was so, that just based on like where you were at the time, like progress wise? You're like, oh, I feel behind on this list and this audition's coming up. Or how did you decide that? You know, it was just sort of in my mind. I, I thought to myself that I was going to have to, it was likely that I was not going to be able to do it all. And so the, the plan was to put just a, a few more eggs in the basket of one. It, it, that decision wasn't made based on how I was feeling about that list. It was more about, the likelihood of me, you know, if that best case scenario happened, which one would I go for? Which at the time seemed really like such a ridiculous thing to think about. So did you consider, were there moments where you, where you considered like, maybe I won't do both of these auditions. This is pretty ambitious. No, I, I kind of had it in my head that, um, that I was just, I was just going to go for both. The story of these auditions, actually, I, I like to begin with an audition that happened prior. So what these auditions were February of 2012. And I took an audition in September 2011. And I was super ready for it. People that I had been playing for said that I was super well prepared. And one of them even said, oh, I could see you winning this audition. And then I actually got to the audition. 
and I didn't play more than four excerpts of the first round. <laughs> and um, I don't think there was too much of a difference in my trombone playing from, you know, the week prior to the audition to the week of the audition. I think it was all psychological. And so, like I said, I was, I was down in Florida and uh, there was a therapist whose office was very close to uh, New World's building, a therapist who played French horn as a high schooler and, you know, enjoyed attending classical music concerts and just by happenstance uh, got connected with a New World fellow at some point and realized, you know, there's a whole bunch, there's a whole orchestra full of people here who uh, are there that um, maybe didn't have the best health insurance coverage, but certainly could benefit from psychological sessions, psychology sessions. And so he was very generous and charged on a sliding scale and wow. just really loved. Yeah, he just really loved having us as clients. I, I think in, in Miami Beach, the, the typical client was uh, a few decades older than we are. So I think that was refreshing for him, too. <laughs> Anyways, I had always been interested in psychology. I took a psychology class in high school, and I thought to myself, you know, this is uh, something I've always wanted to do. Uh, this audition certainly put me in a really bad headspace. Let's, let's go for it. And so, you know, as you can imagine, we started unpacking the overarching psychological elements of me as a human, not just me as a trombone player. Tell me, and, tell me about the yeah. tell me about the the headspace that you were in for that previous audition that wasn't where you wanted to be. I recall being. I just recall being very scattered. I don't think I was particularly hard on myself, but I don't recall being focused. I don't recall having a game plan that day. I'm certainly, you know when to show up, but. I didn't really plan out what I'm going to do in the warm-up room, uh, what I'm going to practice the night before, what I'm going to do during the day leading up to the audition. So, yeah, I, I would say scattered was the best way to describe my headspace that day. And, of, uh, I mean, it wasn't without self-deprecating thoughts. It wasn't without fear. All, all those things that we know and love, right? We, we all know those. <laughs> and it's weird, um, it's weird yeah. how, how prevalent those thoughts are, and they really don't help at all. They don't. They really don't. But through this therapist, I learned that, you know, it's not just trombone playing that I do this. It's really in many aspects of life that I was concerned about what other people thought about me. I didn't think that I was enough. And, and it, it really, I learned that these overarching things crept into trombone playing, but it wasn't, it didn't begin and end with trombone playing. And so... Because of these productive sessions, when these auditions were announced, that audition that, you know, kind of put me in a bad place was in September. These auditions, I want to say, were announced in November. It was just sort of a really good combination of improving the headspace and having some time over that winter break to just practice smart. Make a real game and, plan. Yeah, exactly. In that article, I... well. As you saw, brevity isn't my strong suit, and so that that article is uh, pretty. <laughs> it, it's not. It's and, not a quick read. And but, I don't. Um, I don't. I don't know if I've mentioned the the article is called "A Tale of Two Auditions." It, it's on oh. Toby Off's website. And if you're preparing for an audition, if you're not preparing for an audition, it's it's a wonderful read. It's it's beautifully written, and it's so detailed with everything leading up to the audition and. And I think it's it's just a, such a fantastic resource. I got so much out of it, and that's why I'm so excited to talk to you about this. So, so working with this person, you don't have to go into great detail, but what did it help unlock for you to to help you in your preparation? First of all, thank you for the the kudos. I, I realize we we talked about the article before you pressed the record button. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, to your question, I would say the the biggest thing that I got out of my sessions at that point was this concept of the inner critic, or some people call it the critical voice. But it's that thing in your head, if you want to call it a voice, if you want to call it something else, that uh, leads you to believe something bad is going to happen, even though it's not rooted in reality. 
or that something bad exists, even though that's not rooted in reality. It can be things like, oh, this person isn't going to like me because of the way I look. It can be, oh, there's no way that I could win a job in this orchestra. I, I'm not good enough. And just as a side note, I, I, I really feel like something I, I learned from this, uh, this whole audition process is that if someone waits until they feel that they're ready to win an audition, they might never take an audition. Mm-hmm. And uh, to, to put it in a, another way, this sounds self-deprecating, but I, I say it earnestly. I thought that I had to be a better trombone player in order to win an audition. You have been listening to a free preview of Now Hearing Candidate One, an exclusive video podcast for Trombone Retreat Patreon members. If you're interested in hearing the rest of the episode, as well as having access to more exclusive perks and features, consider being a patron at patreon.com slash trombone retreat.